Hello and uh, welcome to this edition of Journeys in Transformation Analytics. Uh, with me, I'm, I'm Amrish Tripathi. I run the analytics business at Genpact. And uh, today I'm uh, having a conversation with Doug Haig, who is the executive director of the School of Data Science uh, in the University of North Carolina in Charlotte. Doug, welcome. Thank you, Amrish. Great to be here. Perfect. And Doug, I mean, and Doug and I go back uh, many, many years. Uh, he's, he, he, he's, he's, he's transitioned from and in DOS, he was the chief analytics officer for a large bank and, uh, and moved over to academia. Uh, and and I, I, what we wanted to focus our conversation today, actually on a little bit on the both sides of what he's saying. Uh, so Doug, I know you, you, you've been part of the, uh, you, you're training the data scientists of the future, right? right. Uh, and what, how is that market evolving? I mean, as we see everything around right now with, with, with it, it's, it's going to, with, we see all the signs of it being a very supply driven market, the whole analytics data science space uh, with all technology investments going in, the companies are making investments in next uh, or cloud investments after the pandemic. Uh, how, how are you preparing the talent for tomorrow? Yeah, one, one thing is we are making our own cloud investments as well, right, as we move and, and do that. But as we think about the talent, right, data science began at the master's level as people were retraining themselves and learning about the skills. The way the education is evolving now, it's really pushing into the bachelor's degree first to be able to enhance those numbers just so that there's more people. You can put more people through a bachelor's program than a master's program and then even fewer at a PhD. We're really moving from the master's program that they're still growing and continuing to grow, but the bachelor's level and the PhD level is really where we're expanding. And we're also expanding across different fields. So traditionally it was business, computer science, um, that was really the core and finance that was the core of our training. And really that's expanding across all of our departments at the university. And, 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 and what kind of departments? So yeah, the departments is everything. Uh, in the school, we actually have representative faculty from 19 different departments. So it's everything from criminal justice, you know, business, marketing, your traditional computer science, information systems, but uh, also philosophy, uh, ah. communications, and you know, global studies, because the, the way work is done and research is done now is, is in, through collection of data and collection of large amounts of data. So everything from information theory that Claude Shannon started applied to different languages to understanding the biases and information and how that impacts different disparate groups across the world. And, 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 and is it, so, so what, what you're saying is this is a much more fundamental change rather than, uh, rather than talent kind of moving here just because it's a hot space and hot area. It, it's fundamentally how the work gets getting done is changing. It seems it like. Is. Yeah, the, the fundamental work of, of all fields um, are really moving into being based on data. And of course, once you have large amounts of data, you're going to use the data science techniques that we've been training on. So uh, question for you is, if that is the case, so if I'm a, uh, if, if we as an employer or one of our clients who goes as an employer goes in there, so, sh it, so basically what you're saying is in a few years from now, you're going to get a lot more junior talent who's skilled in these tools and approaches and techniques, right. but a lot and who are who have studied data science directly. But you're also going to get a lot of the folks who probably did a bachelor's in something else in geography or in English, but but they will also come with data science skills. Yeah. So they the blending of it is an interesting evolution of the field. And we've structured our programs so that you can double major or have multiple minors. So whether you have a biology degree with a minor in data science or a data science degree with a minor in biology, those combinations are gonna become much more prevalent over time. Interesting, because we, we uh, within in GenPact, we have this term called bilinguals. Uh, and, and, the, the, and that's exactly the notion is you understand, for instance, supply chain and you understand data science together. And that's what makes it a lot more powerful. It seems like at an, ed, at an education degree, that's kind of how you are almost set up an education program on data science with a very similar principle. That, that's right. And it's really come from our industry partners asking us to do that. Um, and the interest of students and as, as students come into college, they don't always know what they want. Yeah. Um, and so exposing them to the many things, but enabling them 
to study their passion, but use all the data science tools that we have, um, whether it's visualization, whether it's machine learning, whatever, but they're applying that to whatever they're passionate about, whether it's biology, whether it's health, whether it's business, whether it's criminal justice, all of that is, is where we're, we're working to train our students. One uh, other question is, uh, yesterday someone actually asked me, is, is the data science work going to become like uh, software development where low code, no code platforms, and basically it's being de-skilling of the kind of the role itself uh, is happening. Uh, what's your perspective given like you, you fr from your yeah, vantage? No, I actually think some of that's going on. I mean, you've got your auto ML tools, uh, you know, automated machine learning tools. I think there's always the higher skills that's necessary but you can have one high skilled cure, you know, what we used to call the unicorn data scientist. Yes. With 10 or 20 people that don't necessarily have as much skill, but know how to use the tools, but it's the oversight and controls that you put around that development. You know, it's called model risk management in the financial industry. Right. That model risk management of where you're putting the risk in still needs that oversight function to be able to say, yes, this is statistically sound, you know, it's all the right methods, the data is good, making sure all of that works is one of those concepts that I'm advocating that this model risk framework really get adopted across many different industries, not just the financial industry where it is today. I mean, this is a topic of a lot of interest, actually. We'll, we'll in, our, in the next episode, let's kind of pick it up, pick up that topic around model risk and some of the other thing, uh, things that we should be thinking of as, the, as within the uh, space of data science. But uh, Doc, thank you so much for coming and sharing your insights. Yeah, thanks, Amrish.